for great okay this is my absolute absolute pleasure it's been a, a few years actually since i had the pleasure of being interviewed by chelsea barons and now i have the pleasure of reciprocating to share her inspired story of midlife career change even though she's a super young woman which we'll talk about you know the the 40s are like the 20s now, it seems, but I know a lot of people still feel they've left it too late if they haven't made a change for the better when they're 20. <laughs> so, yeah. so your story is so inspiring. So I want to um, talk a little bit about at what age, because age is a factor for so many people, at what age did you change careers and start your business? Hmm, okay, so I, I didn't change careers right away. Right. <laughs> started the business at 40 when right before my 40th birthday Cassandra I was my birthday's in October like yours so in in September I was thinking okay uh I'm going to be 40 this year and I was looking around I said I want it to be different I want it to look different and so that's when I decided to embark on the business mm -hmm. so it was that 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 shift of okay I want this next decade and the ones that follow to be significantly different so it was a marker really that sort of four I was a marker for you yes. so let's talk a little bit about the shift that you made then what is your business called and what do you do and also talk a little bit about what you used to do uh-huh yeah my business is called rise to the occasion which I love that Thank you. Yes. And that came out of being called, having this feeling that I was coming up against something that was unfamiliar territory. And I kept hearing this thing in my head that said, just rise to the occasion, rise to the occasion, rise to the occasion. And I thought, well, that's a fantastic business name. Let's go with that. And, and it that still resonates to this day years later. And so I am a speaker and I'm also a career coach. And I started my business as a speaker. I actually hired a coach who helped me. They said, hey, I have this business idea and I want to speak. I want to help people uh, pick up tools and things to help uplift them. Mm -hmm. And so I started hosting events in person and then moved to online events. And then I said, well, what else am I going to do? <laughs> what else? What else am I going to offer people so that they can uh, see their lives differently and have an impact? And that's when I started exploring coaching, uh, which is around the time you and I met. I started coaching mm -hmm. after that and then picked that up and ran with it. And before I started my business, I was working in tech, which I have a very dynamic career. I was working in tech. And then prior to that, I spent some time in accounting. And prior to that, where I started my career was in Hollywood. I was working at Marvel Studios for the head of Marvel. Golly gee, you have had a lot of um, a lot of changes, really interesting careers. And, and I guess some people would look and think, gosh, why did you leave all those kind of safe, secure, kind of maybe in some minds, um, I read an article recently about some people and they were working in TV and movie and everyone thought, wow, it's such a dream. Why are you leaving it? Like one woman, she went to become a nurse and everyone's like, whoa, that's so, like, why would you leave media to become a nurse? What would you say to people who think uh, maybe they should stick at one thing that might seem like it's the big deal? Yeah. And, and I get that. I mean, when I was in film, I got there early. I started in film, I think around 23 years old. Wow. So yeah, really young. <clears throat> and it took some time for me to figure out this, that wasn't the lifestyle that I wanted. When, mm -hmm. when I looked around, there were very few women mm. and I said, all right, is this the lifestyle I want where I basically am married to my work? This is going to be my all day, every day. And I didn't. So I decided to take the leap then back in my early 20s. And that's when I left LA and moved up to Seattle and completely started over. Ah. And yeah, and to expand on that now, you know, coming out of a technology job, yes, that decision was not easy. And yet it's something when you feel like 
the business, the role is not jiving with who you are and where you want to grow in your life. <laughs> it's kind of very clear. I like that word jiving. T tell, me, tell me a bit about that. What's, how do you know if you're jiving in your career and ri rising to the occasion? What, what's jiving? Yeah. <laughs> I like that too. <laughs> I love it. Um, diving is, diving is, okay, is this, is this a skill set that I want to grow? Are these strengths that I want to grow in? Or am I going, am I starting to do a U-turn? Or am I starting to take a, a turn off of the path that I want to be on? And that's exactly what it felt like. It felt like the path had moved and I kept going. So, mm -hmm. That was no longer my path. I like what you said too about because I think very often it's in marketing we call it post purchase post purchase dissonance where mm. you buy something like a fridge a refrigerator and you go oh no oh no and then, and then you immediately regret it and I and I do see a lot of people and you probably do too <clears throat> where people you turn they kind of they're about to take that leap and then they second guess themselves. Or maybe well-meaning people in their life tell them, what are you doing? And you suddenly doubt yourself and kind of don't jive anymore. You kind of <laughs> crawl back. Is that what you, have you experienced that feeling? Yeah, yes. And, and um, with that, I'm, I am lucky in that my husband, my family were very supportive. They said, great, go for it. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes they start to get nervous. You know, and they say, well, hmm, okay. And then I, I change the subject. Let's talk about something else <laughs> because I really need people who are forward thinking and, and positive around me during this time, especially. Yeah. And, and what I do, because I have had people reach out to me and say, hey, Chelsea, we'd love to have you back in tech. This job will pay you well over six figures. You want to come back? And then my first instinct is like, oh, Paycheck, health yeah. insurance here in the States, right? And yeah. and then I then I visualize myself in that position mm. and understand that I am walking away from my dream, mm. what I really mm. want to do. Mm. And every time so far, it has been, let's stay here. Let's keep mm. doing it. Because I really like, um, in fact, we, I wrote down, so you, you don't have to be impressed at my superhuman memory, but we, we connected um, with, you reached out to me, leading with authenticity, which is pretty much what you're talking about with your sort of jive, your jiving is, you know, it's either your music, your, your song, or it's, you know, something that's just used to be a hit, but it's not anymore. And um, I think what we were talking about, how to stress less and find who you truly are and who you truly want to become. And that was, yeah, back in August, 2019. So yeah, that's really interesting because that's really what you're doing, isn't it? You're leading with authenticity and you're having the courage to leave a six figure, you know, because as you know, we've, when you're self-employed, you have to, it doesn't just walk in the door like maybe a salaried job does. <laughs> you know, there's, there's a lot of uncertainty, isn't there? But the there authenticity is, yeah. is what I like you said is for people listening is don't allow any doubts um, to knock you off your wavelength. So turn the dial on to a different, you know, get people to move aside, um, keep on your frequency, keep your vibration high um, yes. to go forward. Yes. Yeah. And, and the way that I see authenticity right now, and this may evolve over time, mm. is what you value, so what's important to you, and then your strengths and your skills. Mm. So everything that you bring that's unique to you as a person. Mm. And when you are off kilter, or you're not jiving with those values, strengths, and skills, that's when you know you're out of mm. your authenticity. Mm. And that was very clearly happening. Yeah. Yeah, so this whole, um, this whole like just getting back to, so you kind of had this, this when you were felt married to the job when you were 23 and no doubt there were other kind of things that were telling you you were a little bit off purpose or it was guiding you to somewhere else I guess you wouldn't have met your husband you wouldn't be married to your husband if you were married to the job would that be right yes <laughs> yes and I had I had met my husband before I worked in Hollywood <laughs> and we weren't we weren't together but we had met 
and I went and pursued my dream and you know, working at Marvel was, I mean, people in Hollywood wanted that job. Yeah, you know, it was it was the place to be. And so the fact that I got there so quickly was a big deal. And I'm grateful for that because I was able to see the upper echelon of the film business and what that was going to look like. Mm -hmm. So then, yes, when I chose to move to Seattle and my, my husband was here and we reunited, uh, yeah, I mean, that wouldn't have happened. He definitely mm -hmm. would not have been in LA. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes, and so I think that you know people listening that sometimes that whole thing of when you do have the courage to move forward, other blessings come into your life, don't they? And we're all, we're all about focusing on the blessings. And so you said you you kind of thought about becoming a self-employed person when you turned forty, and then you told me you officially became self-employed in March twenty twenty one. So tell me a little bit more about you said you played around with what you wanted to do as a side hustle what did that look like what what would we be noticing from Chelsea who wasn't a coach or maybe isn't wasn't even a speaker and she was side hustling what what would using the movie world what would we notice if we were following you with a movie I love that okay a movie um, camera. <laughs> yes I learned a ton okay so it was a great playground it was an opportunity for me to play around, see what worked, what didn't work. And I, I felt, I almost had this safety net when I quote unquote failed. So I, I did six events that year. Mm -hmm. And the first one had tw over 20 people show up. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to about the fourth one and I had one person show up. Mm -hmm. So I learned about marketing. I learned about, hey, just because you do something doesn't mean that all your friends are going to show up, <laughs> nor really should they, right? <laughs> That's, it's, yeah, they it's probably like and, putting out a book. You, you maybe yeah. not buy it and you can't really expect your friends to buy it just to keep you happy because you've got a wider audience that you've got to connect with, not just people who love you and want to help you. <laughs> you want to help right. others. Yeah. Yes. And then at the, the end of that circuit in the fifth and sixth events were my biggest. And what I learned at that point was to collaborate, mm -hmm. to uh, partner with others and to bring in more entrepreneurs that could be supported. So I had vendors, I had panelists, mm -hmm. um, and that created more of a, um, more of an impact and it felt more meaningful mm -hmm. as well. What, yeah. what were you talking about? What were your, what, when you say you're a speaker, what do you speak about, Chelsea? Is it about rising up? <laughs> <laughs> in, in essence, yes. And at that point, when I started speaking, it was about all different things because I, I wasn't sure what, what can I speak about? So I wrote out all my passions and then I spoke about those <laughs> and saw oh, what resonated. Yeah. yeah. So, so my most popular topics were <laughs> our thoughts and their impact. So almost bringing in some cognitive behavioral therapy and looking at your thoughts and how you can shift them. Mm. And then the women in leadership events were very powerful as well to hear different women's voices and what it means to be a leader and how sometimes we discount ourselves as women. We don't always see ourselves as leaders. So mm. speaking directly into that. Mm. And now, um, this, this year I've had two speaking engagements and it's been on networking and career development, creating connection uh, has been the focus. Yeah, so that came from your learning then, didn't it? And your passion that you discovered that it was more fun and more meaningful. And now again, you, with the authenticity, you can show how that leads to success from one meter, from one person showing up to more people showing up. And isn't that what we need more of in the world is connection, collaboration, helping each other and sharing our voices? You know, yeah, the passion, right? Yes. Yeah. And in okay. fact, you reached out to me because you saw the um, video, I think, that I shared with Naomi Barton of her sharing her voice literally through her audiobook narration and just realizing that it was her gift, was her voice. And coming mm -hmm. back to passion, because the number of times people have told me you're setting people up by getting them to think about their passion, that's just setting them up for failure. 
what would you say to people like that talking about thoughts <laughs> right right to shift that belief <laughs> um, oh. yeah, I mean, <laughs> okay great so I mean what what has passion brought you in your life and what is the opposite of passion mm -hmm. right what is and how does that feeling fit compared to passion to me passion is something that energizes draws you in calls you forward wants you to engage so it's it, it you know if it's the problem with the word redefine it relabel it as something mm. that will work work for you mm. yeah in fact the person one of the people that said that to me was a very disillusioned career coach who'd come to career coaching through teaching and i don't think it was her true passion and so i think very often we have to be careful like you said you know sidestep the voices we have to be careful of what history um, someone else is coming from that isn't our history we don't have to yeah. take on board everyone's views um, and, and just stay aligned look for people who are following their passion and making a success of it um, mm -hmm. so i think that's really important the yeah. um yeah so so just back to the side hustle so so you kept your full-time job you or did you reduce your hours or you know because a lot of people will be listening thinking okay how am i ever going to fit a side hustle and I'm already married to my job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I I went through lessons with this too. So when I first started, I was working evenings, weekends, and really burning myself out. Oh. So I would go into work and then come home, work on my business and not see my husband very frequently. And then the following year I I hired someone. So I hired a virtual assistant to help with the things that I wasn't naturally gifted at, you know, things like building a website, things like uh, you know, various things, graphics that she was much better at than I was. Mm. She took that on and that helped to relieve some pressure. And then I had something really interesting happen in 2020, Cassandra. I went through a leadership program and I, had this epiphany, this aha of, am I putting myself through this role or this type of work because I don't think uh, I'm worthy or I don't think I'm good enough. So I'm doing this extra work. So there was some self-reflection there and I paused on the business. I did have a show that I was producing online, but it was much less time than I had put in years prior. And I'm so glad I did that because I learned that it's okay. It's okay to have quiet times. It's okay to pause. It's okay to have the space and regain, re-energize. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, mm -hmm. I would say it's, it's crucial for being mm -hmm. a business owner. So I'm happy that I learned that last year before taking the leap. And before totally burning out. So you had the wisdom to notice, you know, a lot of stuff was... Got, you know, a lot's on the line when you're not connecting with your husband and then your you know, energy is getting low and all the symptoms of burnout that can be really, really toxic. But and to give yourself permission, which I think is a culture where we struggle with, although COVID certainly, <laughs> certainly brought, made a lot of people force them to take time out and they realize they quite enjoyed it. You know, right. but for others, of course, it's been hugely stressful. But that whole thing of actually realizing that you have gifts differing that there are other people who excel in areas that maybe you don't, or maybe you maybe you could really do it really well, but maybe it's not really your love factor. You know, it's not your jive. Sure? Yeah, not your jive. <laughs> I love yes. that. Yes. I can almost, do you have those dolls that people put on the dashboard of their car that kind of, yes. I can Little. almost see the Chelsea. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> manufacture them. <laughs> I love it. I used to have one of those. <laughs> I can see her. Um, yeah. <clears throat> just in your dive. Yeah. yeah, I love that. I love that. And of course, you're probably familiar with Ariana Huffington's story and the wonderful book she wrote about Thrive and about you know redefining what success meant. And it's not the always on, you know, success when she had that you know 
pretty bad fall and sort of woke up and um, yeah and realizing it's a bit like our rugby team here in New Zealand the All Blacks well they have to rest or the Olympians have to rest between training you know it's just somehow we don't women particularly I think struggle with that would you agree maybe more women maybe yes. sometimes all their roles yeah, no, with and it's yes and i see with some of the people i coach the women i coach is that there's an attachment to achievement and worth mm -hmm. so self-worth self-esteem is wrapped up in, in achievement mm -hmm. so figuring out asking yourself is that what it is can i do achievement separately uh just testing that and playing with that a little bit mm -hmm. is what helped me Mm. Yeah, I think um, I was in one of the books I wrote, The Art of Success, where it really was defining what success is. And we sometimes we get sort of, I know, stereotyped into, you know, success being climbing up to the top of the pyramid. But I often say, and I think it's your, um, what's your name, Pelosi, your speaker, is that what you call her? In oh. The Oh yeah, Nancy. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, and she was saying, you know, that success is also being, you know, a, a mum bringing up children, really good, um, caring, responsible, beautiful citizens. You know, that's as as important as being the leader of the house. You know, yes. so yeah, redefining that or success is just being a kind person or being a loving wife. And yeah, can we have it all? I guess that's the question. <laughs> what do you mm -hmm. say to women? Can you have it all? I mean, yes, and, and what does all look like? Yeah. yeah. Does, does all take you to a space where you don't like life mm. or does all keep you in a, put you in a place where you thrive and you love your life and you're mm. connecting with people that light you up? Mm. You know, what, what does all look like? Mm. And can, can you shift it if, if you're aiming for something that is putting you into a place of yuck, you know, can you shift it to something different for yourself? Mm. So I like that, you know, for people listening and I often share that with one of my strategies is creating a passion journal or you could create a success journal because so often, what does it really look like? Because you think I want it all. Well, what does it all look like? It's like thinking, you know what? I want to eat everything on the table, but really, do you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah right yes yes and, <laughs> yes and and i'll tell you too Cassandra. you know coming out of corporate and the 20 years in this type of lifestyle where my day i knew what my day was going to look like for the most part uh you know the paychecks coming in all that stuff and i had during COVID, i had set up my schedule so i could have blocks of time uh, where I went on a walk and that kind of thing. So I thought, oh, it won't be that different, right? Mm -hmm. And then when I got into entrepreneurship full time, I quickly realized I do not want to replace my business with my, you know, I don't want my business to look like my job. Mm -hmm. I want my business to look completely different. Mm -hmm. And so, so what does that mean? That means that there's more space in the day and my brain is saying, what, what, what are you doing? You, you need to work, work, work all the time. Cause that's what you did for 20 years. Yeah. So I get to re I get to integrate this new way of being yeah. Yeah. into the business piece as well. It, it reminds me when I worked in corporate and I, and I actually, and I share that in midlife career rescue, the, the call for cha change when I got shingles because I was really driving, it was a real relentless culture of always on, we know who's going to succeed there at nights and weekends and you really got indoctrinated in, in, in my case in that culture and then going to a non-for-profit where it was quite a different value system and people would leave like at 4.30 in the day and not come back until Monday. And I would sit there almost paralyzed, you know, not able to leave my desk, thinking someone was gonna <laughs> cane me, um, you know, tell me off or do something terrible. And it took ages and ages, you know, it does take time to, but you do reprogram yourself and you don't wanna, what you're saying is you don't wanna replace one, one way, um, with the saying you want to change it up yeah. that's why you why you made the move to your drive your drive right to my drive place yeah <laughs> and it's like you know i'm sitting here i was i'm sitting outside i made the decision to i wanted a location independent 
business. I decided to leave um, the main city. And it's so cool. I can still connect and do my work in a different way and, and yeah, be in control of, of the jive. The jive. Yeah, the jive. The jive. <laughs> So, you know, we've talked a little bit about keeping your energy levels, but is there, and you, um, you've said you're doing a lot about strengthening your mindset. Um, so some of those things are, you know, what are the things you found super helpful for your mindset? Yeah, meditation, number mm. one. Um, mm -hmm. Journaling, journaling number two. I still have a gratitude practice, so somewhat similar to your passion journal. I mean, some, some ways. And I, I do think it's important to do that brain dump, that free flow journaling when you start to ruminate, mm. right? Or you get, you get caught in a pattern. So mm. doing that brain dump and meditation, yes. Number mm. one, I use Insight Timer, which is an app and mm. there you can search meditations. Um, and lately I've been getting more into some spiritual type meditations to connect on a deeper level oh, uh, and nice. you know, that's a personal preference of what you're looking for mm, mm. yeah that's so important to remind people about the practice of meditation I've been I've learned transcendental meditation many many moons ago during a really stressful period and it and it was kind of like when I first um got my contact lenses or my glasses I was like whoa wow <laughs> <laughs> it was an amazing experience and so anyone listening that hasn't got a meditation practice and you've hit on the button too there are many 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 different valid types and some are more spiritual or deeper transcendental whatever you want to call it it doesn't matter whatever it is whatever can help you just tame those sort of wild monkey thoughts really isn't it mm -hmm. and yes the awareness and uh, just connecting to something beyond mm. what you know, what you see day to day or see in the mirror, just feeling mm. like you're part of a, a bigger mm. purpose. One of the things I quite like doing, and I know that was part of the stepping into authenticity when I started sharing, you know, I trained to be a Reiki master. So using, you know, when I started talking like that, you know, some clients would go, Whoa! and other clients came forward. And it took for me a lot of courage to say, well, that's what I'm doing. I, I use universal energy and I do a lot in my painting, a lot of light, putting a lot of light. I sing to my paintings, you know. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I jive actually I do when I'm <laughs> yes <laughs> speaking of authenticity right yes yeah, yeah yeah and you and you just have to own it don't you because you know okay. some people may turn away if you talk in a certain way or you're going towards a certain way and the other people will vibrate towards you because they're looking for that and, and the important thing is you're just being true to what works for you and if people mm. love it they love it and and um mostly I think a lot of people are looking for yeah just just some good positive clear energy people who shine a light which is really what you're doing yes so how have you managed to find customers that's the thing that a lot of people who may be listening thinking how do I oh gosh I'd love to employ myself but how would I get any customers how yeah. did you how did you get clients yeah and there are so many different theories and practices and systems that you can put in place and you know some work for you some don't it really depends on you so for me it comes from relationship building and that's what feels most natural most authentic mm -hmm. so connecting with people that I know offering coaching to to experience coaching and then that either goes into a client relationship or it's turns out to be a referral in the future or simply I helped somebody and that comes back in some way shape or form mm. for relationship so is that attending networking events they you know the, I know your summit them was you know those summits are amazing inviting guest speakers was that a big part yes. of doing was that yes. a helpful yes. tool it was yes the summit so the summit helped uh with when I began my business at the very beginning with coaching mm -hmm. and, um, and I mean, they are, they are a lot of work. Yeah, that's <laughs> a lot of work. Uh, and, um, 
and I invested quite a bit of money to do those summits and mm -hmm. I wouldn't do it any other way. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't try to do a summit necessarily on my own without some type of guidance of someone who's done that path before. Me personally, I wouldn't mm -hmm. because having some kind of map to follow with that big of a project is helpful. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, I think um, it's it's a little bit also like Naomi shared. It was also part of that getting visible, isn't it? Because you know, you've, mm -hmm. there's so it's like if you were Coca Cola, you you need to be out there, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> yes. People, we have to be visible, and I think that really helped. It certainly helped us connect, and um, yeah. and I know yeah, just showing up and sharing your story is a big part of it. So, yeah, again, with you public speaking about collaboration, networking, well, that's that's you're modeling that again with that's really been the core of your business just getting out and and um spreading the word and finding out if there's a need and if there's not it might be a referral so that's really it's not sort of stressful striving it's just right connect true authentic connection yeah yes. and um and yeah I, guess, I think it's helpful for people to know it does take time to build a business you know, it's not, at least in my experience, it's not always overnight. So having some type of financial cushion or plan or part-time work, if that's necessary, something where if that is a stressor for you, you don't want that money stressor mm -hmm. uh, uh, when you're trying to create, when you're trying to birth something. Yeah, that's that's so important because so many people I know they've got really, really stressed because they've just sort of jumped out and they've always wanted to start their business and they have an assumption that it's just all going to kick off. But like anything, it takes time. And I talk more about that in Midlife Career Rescue Employ Yourself, where it's kind of this way, like having discussions with people like you that have made the journey. They're speaking from wisdom, speaking from experience. They're not out selling anything. They're just sharing their story right. about how they created their business and what worked for them. Them. and so you you mentioned you know you some someone had given you the advice of having a year's salary stashed away or something and somehow just intuitively you just you were putting money aside yeah. and then you shared with me you left a little bit earlier than you intended can you tell me more about that you left corporate yeah. earlier yes I had a plan to leave corporate at 50 years old ah the next 10 year milestone. <laughs> yes and you're 43, so right? Now? Yes, yes. Ah, and, that uh, is and I, yes, and that came out of really my example. So I've had family members and friends who have been laid off mm. in their 50s. Mm. And in fact, I talked to a man today who is in his 50s and he's looking for employment and he's having a really challenging time. Mm. And so I I felt like I had a couple choices. I could play the political corporate game and work myself up to a VP, which didn't sound authentic, authentic to me, or I could stay in until I was 50 and create my own thing. Mm. So that was my plan. <laughs> yes. And, and Even I need a plan. Yes, my plan. plan my my plan. My hula dancer did not jive with that plan though. Uh, <laughs> yeah, as I was talking about earlier, we had a leadership change and the business started to go a different direction. And I said, all right, here I am again. I can stay and play the political game and be inauthentic or I can choose differently. Mm. And I chose differently. Mm. And I'm sure, and probably even now, and, and certainly when you're seven years on, when you <laughs> <laughs> when yeah, you're 50 yeah. it'll be a big part of your story because you again you're yeah. you're leading by example by sort of showing well you know where would I be if I hadn't have left seven years ago and um sometimes it's you can plan all you like but the universe yeah. your drive <laughs> has yeah. something your spiritual you know that's really coming back to spirit your spirit was yearning for something else and it wasn't feeling right and sometimes people do say that there's a change of leadership. It's usually a time to start sort of just assessing, is this aligned? Is this going to be a place that I'm going to enjoy going forward? You know, things change, don't they? So, they yeah, that's a big, yeah, I didn't realize that's a big seven year difference. <laughs> yes. And you're um, right. I mean, when I think about myself now and who knows what I'll be like in seven years, but I think about seven years from now, right now, and I say, wow, I would have really missed out. 
I would have really missed out. So I'm glad. I'm yeah. glad. With yeah. What advice would you give to someone who's never started a business, never been self-employed, just that the kind of their soul thinks, oh, I, that would be mm -hmm. exciting. And then the anxious part of them goes, no, oh, I couldn't. What, what advice would you give? Yeah, I would say we all have that. That's a natural reaction mm. when we're feeling threatened or insecure, uncertain. And so I would say start playing with it. Mm. What, what is one thing mm. that you can do that puts you closer to that type of feeling, that type of experience? Mm. Or play write with. that down while you keep talking i love that start <laughs> playing with it i love the play yes. thing is because what is playing what what does it evoke um happiness freedom mm. uh, joy mm, mm. higher vibration energies yeah like, yeah you know that's yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so you start playing with it. So yeah, you're saying yes. it's really common. It's normal. That's a normal valid emotion to feel a little bit anxious or a little bit fearful. That's there's nothing wrong with that. But then just start playing with it and bring in some joy, lightness, levity, take some pressure off yourself. Just see if you might enjoy it more than you think. Yeah. And then what? Well, well, listen to this. So I have a friend who um, she was a lawyer. And she wasn't in alignment. So she quit her job as a fancy lawyer, getting paid good money. And she's been playing. She creates art. She sells things on Etsy. And she said to me the other day, she said, Chelsea, I don't feel like I'm working. I need to be back working. And I said, well, are you making enough money? She said, I'm making more than I did as a lawyer. Wow. But I, I feel like I need to be back in a, in working. I said, why? You don't feel like you're working, you're having fun, you're playing and you're making more money. I, I don't, I don't understand. So it, it, it can be shocking what happens when you start to play and you, mm. you let go, you surrender to, mm. okay, I'm just, I'm just going to try this out. I'm going to play, see what happens. Was it kind of like guilt? It's too easy. Was it, was that what was coming up for her guilt or, yeah. you know, yeah having this idea of you know, being in a proper career maybe is what was coming up for her. Mm. Uh, yeah, having so much fun and generating so much money. That's right, because you're asking all the right questions. You know, it's a sort of different thing if you can't meet your mortgage or something, and then maybe maybe you want to revisit what's working, what's not, not necessarily mean you have to go back and do a U-turn, but you're making money, you're having fun, you're doing something you enjoy and have a talent for you're giving something beautiful to people who are buying it yeah it's really crazy isn't it what come so yeah. with your interests and thoughts and where these thoughts come from um and i think you turning back to what you said also about um how some women might feel i think we all need to just realize there is a a groundswell of old stories um, that have been perpetuated through time, whether it's the Calvinist sort of, you know, work or something that you endure, that it's the road to salvation, it should be hard and virtuous, right. and you know, all those right. stories, or women should be silent and shouldn't have a voice, or they don't have talent, you know, they're just domestic workers. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So I think yeah. those old stories, um, breaking through those stories and, and um, working as you did, you worked with a coach, you're now a coach, that was part of your strategy wasn't it had some coaching um, what else was your advice you'd give to people um along with have fun it's okay to actually love what you're doing right right <laughs> so yeah so play with it and uh and more tangible if this is a real thing that you want to continue pursuing start stocking away some funds mm. start saving some money mm. and um a little bit at a time and then if you can push yourself a little bit with that if it starts to become more serious and and maybe you think of that money this is what i did i thought of that money as my retirement fund you know i was thinking oh well if i save all this this money um then i can retire earlier mm. and it was on top of my retirement fund so i have my retirement fund and this was excess savings right mm. Mm. And I said, oh, well, I can retire earlier. Well, 
okay, am I really living the life I want if I'm focused on retiring earlier versus mm. loving what I do? Yeah, so. yeah. So I like that. It's a whole. It's a whole lot of what you're saying. It's a whole lot of um, mindset challenges. Then there's the whole just the like going out and actually taking a step and seeing if you love it. Then there's the whole trial and error that you talked about earlier. There's the whole you learn. You might think, gosh, what if I fail? Well, it's a natural part of success. Is there will be things that don't work out. Like you said, one person turned up, which is still a success. It's one person. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, the successes that you put yourself out and you tried it, that's a success. And then you keep yeah. building on that and learning and reaching out and connecting. These are all the things that I've, I've picked up from you and the fact of getting into a good mindset with your meditation, getting your funk out. Julia Cameron talks a lot about that in the artist's way, just purging your emotions um, is really important. So you're honoring them. They're still there, yeah. but you're saying yeah. goodbye. You're out now. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. put joy and gratitude and and um, being of service and connecting um, with people or, or reaching out like you did. You reached out because you loved the story about Naomi. So you reached out and you said, you know, great. I love that. And I thought, oh, Chelsea, there you are. Because <laughs> we haven't spoken for three years. And I thought, oh, yeah. two years. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I love seeing Naomi's story. And it's inspiring to hear of people who have have taken the leap later in life or whenever, but later in life is helpful to hear too, um, mm. so that there's a community there. Mm. And, and I was going to say too, Cassandra, mm. I remember when I first started posting for my business on social media and I was so nervous. Mm. Am I going to say the right thing? Am I going to, are people going to judge me? Are they going to say, who are you? Why are you doing this? Uh, and that took me a couple of years mm. to work. And mm. so now when I post on social media, those thoughts are completely gone. So yeah. that's another thing I would advise people is start speaking the language of a business owner on your outlet, start marketing yourself as a business owner in some way, shape, or form. Mm. It's really, yeah, like you say, it's really important. That's why I think tuning into podcasts, subscribing to people's newsletters, um, hearing from people that are talking in the language that you want, they're all about you can do this, you know, positive positivity and sharing the vulnerabilities like you've you've just done around you know kind of the fear of being out there and the fear of being making a mistake and you kind of reminded me I used to have this fear of public speaking real acute and many people do and you know I would but I would get this physical thing that made it even worse where I'd go just so red like this huge red right from you know your throat chakra yeah. right Round and I would be just and sometimes I used to wear this green makeup <laughs> to match what I looked like <laughs> to make my red go down. And then in the end, I went to Toastmasters, feel the fear and get on with it anyway. I mm -hmm. I learned to stand and give. You know, I just I just learned from pros, like you said. You go and learn from people, whether it's just someone who can help you with a summit or someone who can help you with social or someone who can get rid of your help you process your anxiety or your negative thoughts and just deal with the block and then yeah. just keep showing up and you know the cliche and the death of fear is certain. When you face it, I remember someone threatening me when I went to high school and I said to him, I'd rather die than you know, pick up that piece of paper you've just dropped on my feet. Because <laughs> I thought, yeah. actually, I would rather die than live in fear. And yeah. if he was going to smack my head and he was going to do it. So I was, I was tooled up. I was ready for it. And the fear of anyone, you know, it just disappeared. That guy just melted away and became yeah. my best friend. <laughs> yeah, really? Yeah, oh. he was always looking out for me. And I don't know, people like courageous people. I think they don't pick on people that are afraid. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they don't pick on people that aren't afraid. Yeah, right, right. So showing right. up, yeah, showing up, and look how confident you are now. Yeah. So as we wind up this wonderful, beautiful thing, um, are there is there a right order to employing yourself to being an entrepreneur? Is there like a must do strategy? Mm, no. <laughs> Just your way. Yeah. Our way. There are, yes, there are plenty of strategies that you can buy 
there and what I found is when I've bought those strategies, I always get to layer in my own authenticity to that strategy in order for it to be successful. Mm -hmm. So, so you're going to hear people who have strategies you can buy. Yes, this is my plan. And with my plan, you're bound to be successful. Mm -hmm. And yes, you, you have more success than doing it on your own and getting help and guidance mm -hmm. and be sure to inject yourself mm -hmm. in that strategy, that plan mm -hmm. and that, that I guess is the right way. Yeah. yeah. Love that. Yeah. Yeah, just being, I think Coco Chanel said, you know, it was about successes when you show up as you, you know, uh -huh. you, you. That, that's, that's it, right? Yeah. So um, you, let me see what I wanted to know before I, um, before you told me where people can tell everyone where they can find you is, you know, I'm interested in the idea of midlife magic. Hmm. What, what does that resonate with you? Like there's magic in midlife. It's not midlife crisis, midlife magic. What, how does it speak to you? I like that. I just got goosebumps. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I like that. You know, um, my, my brother is 11 years older than me. And so his wife and those friends that I have through them are 10 years or so ahead of me. So I've been able to watch them when I was in my thirties, they were in their forties. Now they're in their fifties. And I just see them opening up and owning who they are more and more through mm. the year. And when I got to 40, I said, wow, this is so much better <laughs> mm. than, than ever, anything that I had experienced. It just keeps getting better. So yes, magic, 100%. Yeah. I love that. Like the magic I could see when you said that opening up. But like, you know, I think a lot of people resonate with the idea of a lotus that there is a bit of a swamp beneath their feet sometimes. And then they just, wow, they're just this, they can take everything that wasn't maybe so nutritious and they get everything from it as they grow and bloom and they come yeah. rising up, huh? Yes, rising up, rising to the occasion. <laughs> rising to the occasion. So where can people find you, my friend? Yes. My website is rise to the and mm. I spend most of my time on LinkedIn under Chelsea Barron. So please find me there and also a little bit of time on Instagram at Chelsea Seattle. Great. Well, uh, if I haven't got them already, maybe you can just email me those links and I'll put them in when I, when I upload it as well. But um, that has been a beautiful, beautiful um, conversation. Thanks for reaching out to me and sharing that whole message about just, you know, to everyone, I think the take home is just start playing with it. If you've got an inspired idea, something that gives you goosebumps, something that feels magical, something that's maybe a dream that you've had for a while, just play with it. Don't be too serious. Don't feel you're like you have to get it all perfect in one um, rush. Just, yeah, just do it the Chelsea way and just feel the jive. Feel <laughs> <laughs> <Just> the jive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and definitely let me know when you get that dashboard doll so we can oh, all. I get will. <laughs> So I'm going to stop the recording uh, now and then we'll just have a little, little chat. Um, but thanks everyone for tuning in. That's um, Chelsea Barons and we will leave the links below in the show notes. Thank you.